Hi, I'm Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for watching my channel. I really deeply appreciate it. I've got a really cool holster for you, but before I show it to you, I just want to remind you, please subscribe. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and that way we can let you know when new videos come out. It helps us grow the channel as well. That way we can produce more and better videos for you. All right, now, that for that little plug, <laughs> with that little plug, here comes the holster. Harry's Holsters sent me this uh, inside the waistband holster right here, and I've been wearing it the last several days and trying it out. Now, i got to tell you, I've never been a big fan of inside the waistband holsters. I probably should start off by telling you that now, primarily because they tend to be uncomfortable for me. But this particular one has worked out really, really well, and I'm, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Uh, not only do I not typically like inside the waistband holsters, I typically don't like Kydex ones because they're so unforgiving where leather will will bend a little bit. The Kydex makes me bend around it. But having worn it a lot and carried it quite a bit, even with a full-size Glock, I found it to be very comfortable. But let me give you, before I go any further, my criteria for holsters. The first one I already mentioned. If I'm going to wear a holster or use a holster, the darn thing has got to be comfortable right out of the gate. That's number one. It's got to be comfortable. And because it doesn't matter what other criteria it meets, if it hurts me to wear it, I'm not going to wear it. And I've got a whole bag full of holsters that I bought I thought would be comfortable and they turned out not to be. And so as a result, I don't wear any of them. And so that's the number one criteria. All right, after that, it's, it's safety concerns and functionality and so on. For example, I like holsters that cover the trigger guard entirely. And you can see that this one does. I also like holsters that have some versatility to them, especially the Kydex ones, where I can adjust the particular angle that they, they sit in, on my belt. Uh, this one has a lot of versatility. In fact, it came with so many clips and options that, honestly, maybe I'm just simple. <laughs> okay, I, I probably am simple, but I was very confused by them. And the one thing that they did not provide when they sent me this thing was any instructions so I knew what clip was for what, as I have no idea. So if I have any criticism of Harry's holsters, it would be that I, I wish they had included some instructions along with the holsters so that I didn't have to figure out how to connect things and so on. It wasn't hard, but some instructions would have been kind of nice. Now, I know the old thing, you know, <laughs> said, when all else fails, read the instructions. Yeah, well, I probably would have read the instructions first, and I didn't have any. So there you are. All right, but I, I did have all those other clips. I just settled on this one because this is the one I liked, but there's a ton of options. Now, there's other things about the holsters that I, I want. I want them to have some form of retention, but not something I have to physically undo. So for example, if it's a concealment carry holster like this one, I don't want to have a strap on it. I don't want to have a button I have to push or anything like that. I just want the holster to naturally retain the firearm to some degree so that if I have to run or jump or whatever to get away, that the gun doesn't come flopping out of my holster and end up on the ground. Or if I get knocked down, the holster doesn't come loose. But at the same time, I want to be able to get the holster quickly or get the gun quickly right at, rather out of the holster. Uh, if I need it, because, you know, it's a panic button, right? You got to get to the thing really fast. So honestly, uh, I would say the only thing beyond that is I like holsters that are well-made. And this holster is very well-made. It's a very strong, heavy Kydex, and it's extremely well-made. Now, they also sent me, in addition to the holster, which I'll, I'll set down, uh, they also sent me, if I can get it out of my pocket, a, uh, a mag pouch, which was kind of cool. It is Kydex as well, and it's also very strongly made. And uh, what's really cool about it, if I take the mag out, you can see, is uh, it's reversible. So I have it set up as an inside the waistband holster for a right-hander. So it would go inside my belt that way. But after wearing it that way for a while, I just really didn't like it inside the waistband. So I probably would move this over here and use it outside the waistband. I think the original intent was so that if you're left-handed, you want to put it over here inside the waistband. But what I, I did like is the fact that if I wanted to carry it outside the waistband, I could by simply moving the clip from one side to the other. And the holes are there for me to do that. So it gives me some additional versatility. Now, after I've talked about all of that stuff, that's the, you know, what I want the holster to be before I even put it on. It fit all of my criteria. It's even comfortable, oddly enough. The big deal, though, is can I get the gun out of the holster efficiently and quickly when I need it, and can I reholster the gun safely without having the holster fight me and close up or get in my way or whatever the case might be? Well, I took it down to the Rainbow Range to test that out. Let's go see. That's the case. So the holster actually rides very well right back here. I found that's the most comfortable spot for me. Um, 
I've discovered the holster has great retention, holds the gun really well, but it also makes it easy for me to draw the weapon. I don't like having any retention on a concealment holster because when I need the gun, I need it right now. And my retention is the fact that somebody, nobody has, knows I have it because it's reasonably concealed. Now, I generally wear an outside the waistband holster, and I'm almost always wearing shirts like this because it covers up the gun, which means instead of opening up a jacket, I live in Southern California, I have to lift the garment out of the way and pull it out of the way in order to get to the gun. And it takes maybe a little bit longer to do that. Um, and it looks something like this. So it's relatively quick, but I'm not going to win any quick draw contests. Now let's put the gun back again. We'll try it one more time. Now keep in mind that if you're a concealed carry holder or off-duty police officer or whatever, you're carrying a gun concealed, remember, drawing the gun needs to be as quick as you can do it and do it safely and put rounds on target where you want them to go. Putting the gun back in the holster, you can take your time about that. First of all, once it's out, you kind of want to make sure you don't have any other anybody else that's wanting to plant flowers in your hair. Uh, but at the same time, when you put the gun away, you want to make sure that your clothing is not getting stuck in the holster, you've got something in the way, or your finger's not on the trigger, you know, you're nervous and scared or whatever. So put the gun back very slowly and deliberately. The gun needs to come out quickly and get into action quickly, but afterwards it's a matter of very slowly and deliberately finding that holster and slowly putting the gun back in the holster until you feel it retain, and then, you know, cover yourself back up again. Remember, nobody ever won a gunfight by being the fastest guy to holster the gun. It's the other way around. The gun has to come out quick and get into action and then move whatever you're going to do. But when you put the gun back, it needs to come back and be put away slowly and deliberately. Now, if, you, if you're in a climate where you're wearing a shirt over the top that's you know, not like this or you're wearing you know, a jacket or something, that's different. Um, if you want, I'll come back in just a second and show you how that applies with this holster or with any holster for that matter that's concealed. Okay, I'm back. I had to grab another mag and unbutton my shirt basically. But if you've got a dock, if you've got some sort of a garment that's open in the front like this one is, that's easier. You don't have to pull it out of the way. You just got to sweep it out of the way to get to the gun. But it's important that you do it where, the, where it gets completely out of the way. If it's a heavy garment, you can take your palm and put it here and rest it and run it all the way around like that and get it that way and just kind of sweep it out of the way with your palm. That's pretty easy. Another way to do it is to grab it with a hooking uh, grip like that and flick it all the way back. So what you're doing is grabbing it, flicking it all the way back and grabbing the gun. Um, either one works. If I, like I said, if I'm wearing a suit jacket, or t I tend to, to ride it back, but you can see with a light shirt what happens is it kind of gets tangled in your fingers. So if it's a light shirt, you might discover that grabbing that hook, hook, flipping it out of the way all the way back, then coming down on the gun and grabbing the gun that way might work better. So let's try that. So we flick it and the gun comes out. Okay. Now I'm just shooting two shots for demonstration purposes, but obviously you're going to keep shooting until the threat is no longer there for you. And uh, that's that. All right. Again, putting the gun back slowly, getting our hand out of the way, we're going to take our time and make sure that gun goes back in that holster and snaps into place without uh, shooting ourselves squarely in the rump. <laughs> That's no bueno, don't do that. All right, one more time. All right, flicking it out of the way, and the gun comes out, and then at that point, you're gonna be moving. You may wanna move while you do that. Uh, whatever your training is, if you haven't had any training, go get some. <laughs> That's always a good thing. Flick it out of the way, draw, move, whatever you gotta do. Check for other threats. You can do it this way. A lot of instructors teach that. You can do it here. A lot of instructors teach that. Depends on your environment. Depends on the situation. But then when you decided you're safe, you want to put the gun away. The nice part about this holster is it's a very strong, well-made kydex, and it stays open very nicely, so I can find it, put the gun right back. So all in all, I've been very satisfied. I figured I'd teach you a little bit about drawing while I was here, but I've been very satisfied with the Harry's holster. It's extremely well-made. Uh, it's very positive. It's the most comfortable inside the waistband holster I've been able to find. And I'm actually using it. And for me to use an inside the waistband holster, well, you ask anybody that knows me and they'll go, wait, what? <laughs> because I typically don't like them. And then when, when uh, they contacted me, asked me to review it, I thought, well, I don't know if that's fair because I generally don't like them. But this one, I like fairly well. I mean, it's a, it's a really good holster. I like it. 
Well, there's the Harry's holster for you, this great little deal right here, which honestly, I've been very pleasantly surprised uh, by. I really wasn't expecting to like it that much because as you know, I don't like uh, I don't like Kydex holsters that much, particularly inside the waistband, but I'm, I'm very pleased with this one. If you'd like to know more about the Harry's holster or where you can buy it, just go to the links in the description. I've got a link down there so that you can find all the information that you need about it. And uh, obviously, uh, I recommend it. It's a terrific holster and seems like a great little company. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Please check us out on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Check out our website. And while you're there at the website, you can also find out how to join the National Rifle Association for less. I want to urge you to join the NRA. The NRA needs your help. If you like gun videos and you like uh, shooting and so on and you're not a member of the NRA, you need to be. So go back to that website. That's our website. And, uh, and check out the National Rifle Association. We do have a link for you to join and save yourself some money. You can join for a year for less than the cost of one box of ammunition. And if for some reason you didn't catch that little link when it popped out, you can check out the links in the description. We put it down there for you as well. Also, if you have not already uh, acquired some sort of backup legally in case you ever use your gun for self-defense and you have a gun or you carry a gun and you might have to use it to defend yourself one day, you may find that you need some legal backup because you're going to find yourself being sued or perhaps being prosecuted afterwards, rightly or wrongly. That's kind of the way the system works in just about every state of the union. I use a company called Second Call Defense, and they provide me some great services. They'll provide me with an attorney 24 hours a day, second, seven days a week, so that if I get arrested, I can call and have the cop talk to the attorney on the phone. Uh, they also will advise me over the phone. They'll provide me with money to bail me out of jail. They'll send it right to the bail bondsman for me. And they'll send a retainer and follow-up fees to an attorney to represent me in any legal action against me, whether it's criminal or civil. And I don't have to pay any of that money back. Neither do you. All they charge is a monthly fee. So it's, and it's rather, rather small, actually. So I urge you to check out Second Call Defense. Once again, there's a link in the description for that, but there's also a link on our website. So if you see that little thing pop out up here, that'll take you to the Gun Guy TV website, and you can find Second Call Defense information there. And that's where you'd go to sign up and save yourself a little bit of money as well. Thank you again for watching. I really deeply appreciate it. Please subscribe uh, to our channel. This little button up here is what that's what that's for. And, uh, and we'll let you know when new videos come out. Have a great week and be safe.